Good morning, High Ridge Church. Can we give the Lord some praise this morning, everybody? Man, don't we have such an incredible worship team? I don't know about you, but I am just stirred up and excited about all that God is doing in this place. His presence is in this place. And I just love hearing you and seeing you worship the way that you do. Hey, I want to let y'all know something that is coming up on November the 14th. We have Heart for the House, and you want to put that on your calendars right now because we have an opportunity to partner at a higher capacity with the vision of expanding the kingdom that our church and the heart that we have uh, as a church to, to bring more into the family. And so we want you to hear what's going on in 2022 and, and what's ahead and where we're headed as a church. So make sure that you put that in your calendar. It's going to be an absolutely incredible faith-filled day. And so I'm so excited about that. But we got a special treat for you this morning. I've got uh, Pastor Zach in the house, our Fort Worth campus pastor. He's a phenomenal leader, a phenomenal communicator, a great man man of God, great father, great husband, um, and I am so endeared to him because this guy um, invested me early in my ministry career at a great capacity. He took the time and taught me how to do ministry. He took the time and taught me how to be a communicator. He actually taught me how to preach the word and, and gave me my first opportunity to preach on a platform and, and, and then saw how it was delivered and even gave me a second opportunity. Uh, praise God for that. And so I'm so excited to have him here today. He's going to do an incredible job. Would y'all give him a round of applause while he makes his way up here right now? So glad to have Pastor Zach in the house preaching the word today. If you would, go ahead and extend your hands. We're going to go ahead and pray, and we're going to get into the word today. So, Lord, we just thank you for Pastor Zach, and we just thank you um, that he gets the opportunity to share the word today. We pray that people would receive this in their heart and their spirit, Lord, and we just pray that people would come to know you today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. Mineral Wells, what's up, man? Yeah. Listen, I, here's the deal. I know most of you are excited to be in church today, but here's what I promise you. You're not near as excited as I am to be here because this is my first time to actually get to come and share the word with you guys. Uh, in fact, I remember back in 2019, um, my family and I had been on vacation for a few weeks, and my first phone call with Pastor Jeff when we got back, uh, he told me, he said, man, there's another church uh, that's looking to join the High Ridge family, and they're just down the road from you. Now, for those of you who don't know, dear during that time, I used to be the, the uh, Graham, High Ridge Church Graham campus pastor. And at the time, I was the only campus. And so when I heard that someone else was joining the family, man, I was pumped, and especially being right down the road from you guys. And so all that to say, uh, for the past year and a half, I've been watching from a distance all the great things that God is doing in the town of Mineral Wells. In fact, can I just go ahead and tell you? that what God is doing in and through this church in the small town of Mineral Wells is not normal. I, I'm from Louisiana, okay, I got to Texas as fast as I could, but I'm born and raised in Louisiana in a small town, so I know what it's like to live in a small town. And for three years, I pastored in Graham, High Ridge Church in Graham, Texas. And I just want to tell you that what's happening through High Ridge Church in Graham, Texas, what's happening through High Ridge Church in Mineral, Texas, listen to me, this is not normal for what God is doing on a weekly basis through a church in a small town. Do you guys realize that you've baptized 61 people this year? Come on, somebody. 61 people. That's not normal. And hey, listen, it's not because of the name that's on the building here. It's simply because God is doing something in and through the leadership of this church and in and through your life. And so I'm excited to be here because you're a family that I've been watching from a distance. And I'm just here to tell you that you are so, so loved. Do you realize that? You're so loved. You're loved all the way from Graham, you're loved from Fort Worth, from East Texas, now Rockland, California. You have pastors, leaders, and congregations praying for you, and we've all been watching from a distance all the incredible things that God is doing in and through this church. And I just want to say how proud I am of you and how thankful I am that you're a part of the family. And while we're on that subject, I also want to give a shout out to your pastor, your campus pastor, Ron Sims. Here's why. You, you heard him say that I got a got the opportunity to invest in his leadership early in his ministry, and I did. I loved investing in Ron and spending time with him, and, and I definitely don't get credit for that. I just saw what God already put in his life and tried to help him become all that God has designed him to be. But I just want to say in front of all you guys and to Pastor Ron how proud I am of you. 
Um, man, just to tell you that I'm proud of you, seriously, is an understatement. And I know I talked to you first service, so this is the second time you're hearing this. But I do need you to hear and understand that it's an understatement for me to say how proud I am of you. Um, one, because I know the weight that you carry. Two, I know the spiritual warfare that you and your wife and your children face. And the fact that you show up week in and week out and you do the job that God's called you to do and you love these people despite all the warfare that comes with being a pastor, man, I'm just so proud of you. And not only have you done it, you've, you've shined, man. You've done an incredible job with this campus. Um, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but just in 10 months, Again, 61 baptisms, over 300 salvations. Your generosities continue to rise. Man, incredible things, impact on the city. All that within 10 months because a man decided to be who God has called him to be. So with a loud applause, show him some love. Come on, show him some love. I love you, brother. All right, so today I'm going to be sharing a message with you um, that I would consider my favorite message that I've delivered this year in 2021. And we're 10 months in. In fact, if I were asked by God to go on a preaching tour of the United States, and God said, okay, Zach, I know you got a bunch of messages. I need you to pick one that you're going to share with the country as you travel. This would be that message. This would be that message. Here's why. Because it isn't something that I just enjoy preaching. It's something that has changed my life. And I truly believe today that you came to church because you really want to hear from God and you want your life to be different. Amen? You got up, you dealt with the kids, you drove here, dealt with all the chaos of this morning, you got here, you drank two cups of coffee, everything you've done this morning to come in this building, not so that you'll leave the same, but so that you'll be different. Now listen to me, this is a bold statement coming from a preacher. We all say this about all of our messages. But I truly believe today that this could be one of those messages for you. For those of you that have been in church a long time, maybe you've been to a conference, maybe you went to a, a worship concert, maybe you remember a message on a Sunday morning, but, but all of us probably have those moments where we remember where God touched us and did something special in our life during that concert or during that worship set or during that message. Well, I believe today, and again, I know it's a bold statement, but I believe today that for some of you, this could be one of those messages. And it's not because Zach Greider's giving it to you. It's simply because God wants to speak into your life and God desires for you to become the man and the woman he's called you to be. And so this message this morning, again, the reason I'm excited about it is I've actually had the opportunity to preach it in East Texas at High Ridge Church Longview and Fort Worth and Graham and now here because it's one of those messages for me that even though this is the fourth time I've preached it, check this, uh, I still need to hear it again. And even though it's the second time I preached it this morning, I need to hear it again. And my hope today is that I'm going to equip you as a believer to learn the disciplines of this message to apply to your life when you're going to need them the most. So if you're a note taker, I want you to write the title of my message down today. I don't title a lot of my messages, but I'm super proud of this one, all right? So I want you to write this one down. Here's the title of my message today, Ten the Flame. Everyone say, Ten the Flame. Tend the flame. That's what we're going to look at today. Let's pray as we get ready to dig into God's word. Lord, we thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you for that incredible moment of worship, God. Thank you that we get to live in a country where we get to gather in your presence freely, Lord. God, my hope today is that not a single person in this room or watching online has wasted this moment or this time, but that we would receive from you what you so desire for our life. And Holy Spirit, I invite you into this moment to use my voice to build and encourage your people. And in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. So back in 2020, uh, when the pandemic hit, for those of you that were high ridge during that time, you'll remember that all of our campuses decided, much like the rest of the country, to shut down and go completely online. Well, for us, being a part of a larger family, for me, I was in Graham at the time, it meant that for the next eight weeks, I was gonna be spending all my time in my house with my lovely, beautiful, awesome, well-behaved three children. So here's the deal. Once I figured out, okay, there's nothing for, to me to do, for me to do, because even our online services were coming from Fort Worth. I don't know if you remember this. So for me, I'm like, okay, I can't go to the office. I live in a small town of Graham. Okay, Mineral Wells is a small, Graham small. Y'all are 13,000, they're 9,000 on a good day, all right? Small town, and me being a man, I'm not designed to sit in a house with, again, three lovely, awesome, well-behaved children 24-7 for eight weeks. So I started to 
get a little bit of anxiety because I need to get out of the house. All the men said, amen. So here's what I said, okay, I can't go to work. What am I going to do? And when this happened, it was around April or May. So, and again, I'm from Louisiana, born and raised redneck as they come, all right? So turkey season was over, so there was nothing for me to go hunt or shoot. So I'm like, I need something to do, so I need a new hobby. So sitting around, I thought, you know what? I have access to a lot of property. I'm going to pick up camping. So then I did what all men do whenever they pick up a new hobby. I went and spent lots of time on YouTube learning how to go camping. Now, some of you are like, wait a second, Zach, redneck from Louisiana, you don't know how to camp? Let me explain something, okay? Born and raised in Louisiana, you don't just go camping for fun. Who does that? That's how I was raised, all right? If you go camping, it's because you're running yo-yos, you're running jugs, you're out there hunting something, you're catching, fishing, or whatever. You didn't just go camp for fun. But I decided I'm going to do this. So I started doing a lot of research. And through the research, here's what I found. There are a lot of different ways to camp. Do you realize that? There's like a billion different ways to camp. You can take a camper, you can have a trailer, you can have hard wall tents, you can do this, that, or the other. But here's what I decided. With my six-year-old son, I said, son, if we're going to camp, we're going to camp like men. So here was my one rule. If it doesn't fit in a backpack, it doesn't go. That's glamping, we're camping, all right? So I started doing all this research, buying all this stuff, and after going a few times, I picked up a routine with camping. So I would get there a certain amount of time before dark because I needed time to go and gather all the wood that we were going to need to cook with and to stay warm throughout the night. I was going to set up my tent, my, my hammock, and set up his tent. I had a routine that I did every time we went camping. Well, one particular weekend, I get there, I go through my routine. Everything's going great. I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning, and as I go out, I have a morning routine where I need to build a fire because for me, like many of you, I need my coffee first thing. Or a possession begins to take over my personality, and it's not good for anyone. My son also needs his oatmeal in the morning because if he doesn't get his oatmeal, he's not saved yet. A demon possession happens, and it doesn't go well for anybody. So my routine is I wake up in the morning and I go build a fire and I start cooking coffee and cooking food. Well, when I woke up, I realized I made a huge mistake. See, before I went to bed, I forgot to put all of the firewood under the tarp. And it had rained throughout the night and so now all the wood is soaking wet. At this point, I can feel the anxiety building up inside of me. My son's still asleep, but I know when he wakes up, it's not gonna go well. So then the anxiety starts to build up. I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out. I got to build a fire. So I spent 45 minutes trying to get this fire going. And finally, after 45 minutes, bam, I got it going. The fire's going. I'm pumped up. I'm excited. My son's up. He's been screaming for oatmeal. We're good to go. The fire's small. It's a little bitty flame. And as I'm building the fire, I see the sky start darkening. And at this point, I realize the rain's not done. So now... I'm freaking out because the fire is going, but I still haven't had my coffee. He hasn't had his oatmeal yet. How am I going to protect this fire from where it rains? Like what I want to do is go get another tarp. So then as I'm freaking out and having all this anxiety, sure enough, it starts pouring rain. I'm not talking Texas rain. I'm talking Louisiana type rain, all right? Like it is pouring down rain. And at this point, I got a choice to make. Do I stick with the fire to save both our lives because we're not going to be able to live with each other? If I don't get my coffee, he doesn't get his oatmeal. Or do I protect the fire? So for some reason, and I don't know how I knew to do this. Maybe it's through my YouTube research. Maybe it's because I've watched too much Bear Grylls. I don't know how I knew this. But I thought, you know what? If I just keep putting wood on the fire, the outside of the wood will protect the flame from the rain while the bottom side of the wood provides the fuel that the, the fire needs to get bigger. So sure enough, it's pouring down rain. And what I found is every time I saw the flame get big enough to start coming out from the wood, I would take another piece of wood and I'd put on that flame. All the while, I'm getting drenched. And sure enough, the more wood I put on the fire, didn't matter how hard it was raining, the fire got bigger and bigger and bigger. And your boy got his coffee, my son got his oatmeal, and we lived. (laughs) You know what I find interesting about Christians? What's interesting about Christians and what I've experienced being a pastor for over 10 years now is that for a lot of Christians, when the rain comes, and by the way, it will come, can I just remind you what Jesus said in Matthew 5? He said, for he makes it God, his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. 
The rain will come. What is the rain? Your marriage on the rocks. Your marriage struggles. Your children, your health issues, your finances, the, the, the problems with our country, the problems with your boss or your business. Rain will come against your life. And here's what I've discovered about Christians. A lot of times when the rain comes, the temptation is, instead of tending to the flame, what we want to do is run for shelter. And for a lot of us, we struggle in our relationship with Jesus because for a lot of Christians, they came to Jesus because they thought that meant a better and perfect life without trials, without suffering, and without problems. And the issue is when we as Christians face those storms, when we find ourselves in a valley, what most Christians end up doing is running for cover instead of tending the flame. In fact, church in 2020, over 30% of the church did this very thing. Do you realize since the pandemic hit that 30%, over, I think it's around 34, 35% of the people that were attending churches pre-COVID are now gone and they haven't come back. And you know what I've seen as a pastor is that there are a lot of people who come to Jesus for the wrong reasons rather than coming to Jesus just for Jesus. Do you realize even when we study the Bible that trials and suffering and, and life happens on this planet? And so what I want to help you do as a believer is learn how to navigate when those things hit your life. So here's the question we want to answer today. How do we as Christians stay, everyone say stay, in God's presence in the midst of a storm? How do you stay in God's presence when your marriage is falling apart? How do you stay in God's presence when you're struggling to pay the bills? How do you stay in his presence when your health is deteriorating? How do you stay in God's presence when you get on social media and you see a country that's tearing itself apart? How do you stay in God's presence? That's the question that I want to answer today for you, friend. Because listen to me, what I've seen in my history of pastoring is that for a lot of Christians who love Jesus and praise him, what oftentimes happens is as soon as the storm hits, they run. Instead of running to God, they run from God. In fact, as a pastor, in my experience as being a pastor, I see this happen all the time. A lot of times, nine out of 10 times, not all the time, but nine out of 10 times, I can tell when someone's going through a trial or suffering or something in their life because what begins to happen is they begin to pull back. You don't see them as church as much. You don't see them posting verses on social media all the time now. You don't see them serving a whole lot. Their worship looks different. And sure enough, they just fade away. Why? Because they came to Jesus for the wrong reasons rather than just come to Jesus because they want Jesus. And I'm here to remind all the Christians in the room that when you came to Jesus, if your question is, what do I get? Does that mean all my money problems are solved? Does that mean my, all my health issues are solved? Does that mean I'm never going to experience suffering or tribulation in my life? If that's why you came to Jesus, you came to the wrong reasons, because here's what you get when you come to Jesus. You get Jesus. Anything on top of that is a bonus. It's all about him and relationship. So my desire for you today, church, is to help you understand the value of this relationship. And when, everybody say when, when the storms come. Not if. But when they come, I want to give you these things that are going to strengthen you in the midst of that storm. So if you're taking notes this morning, I want you to write this first thing down. How do we stay in God's presence when we're in a storm? Number one is this, stay calm. Stay calm. Some of you are like, well, Pastor Zach, that's not very tweetable. Like I was looking for something better than that or deeper than that. And sure, it sounds simple, but it's extremely complicated when we try to live it out, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. When those storms, when that rain, when those things that come against our life hit us, oftentimes what happens is our emotions get the better of us, don't they? So we don't stay calm. And instead what happens, instead of tending the flame, we run for shelter. And so I think the first thing that we've got to be willing to do as a church is we've got to be willing to stay calm. When that thing comes against your life, that storm, stay calm and remember who your God is. In fact, Isaiah 41.10 would say this, fear not, for I am with you. This is talking about God. This is God speaking to you right now in your circumstance. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So in one verse, God says five times, I am with you and I've got you. And look, we know this, right? Like this is not new information for any of you. 
But the problem is that when we face storms in our life, we start thinking things like this, man, God, are you really there? I mean, God, do you really listen to my prayers? God, do you see what's happening in my life right now? And what begins to happen, the more storms we face, the less our faith becomes. And by the way, for those of you that are new to church, I'll make faith really simple for you. Here's what faith is. It's confidence in God's goodness. That's what it is. We don't have to complicate it. It's real simple. Faith is us being confident in his goodness. And what happens to a lot of Christians, listen, I've been guilty of this in my past, that as soon as a storm comes against our life, we start to question God's goodness in our life. And so the reason that I give you point number one, stay calm, is because it's, it's you taking control of your feelings and your emotions. Because there's nothing wrong with having questions, but there is something wrong when, when those questions lead to a lack of faith in your life. And so when we face a storm in our life, we've got to take control of it. We've got to remember who our God is. So again, as I shared with you, my oldest child, his name is Arrow. He's six years old now, and and here's what I've learned about Arrow. He, he loves being in the outdoors. He's about as redneck as you can get at six, all right? Daddy's doing a good job. He, redneck, loves being in the outdoors, would live at the dear least if he could. And he's fearless, like absolutely fearless. My son is scared of just about nothing. In fact, one time we were out at a piece of property and I was talking with another adult. And for all the parents in the room, I'm having this conversation with him, but I'm watching my son play over here with this wood that's rottening on the ground. We're out at this piece of property. And I see my son, and at this time, I think he was four years old. He lifts up this piece of wood. And when he lifts up this big old rotten piece of plywood, there was like an entire colony of mice that go everywhere. But there's one little mice that just sat there and shivered. And as I'm talking with this adult, I see my son and he looks at me and I know what he's thinking. And before I can get out of my mouth, don't you grab, he just, look daddy, and just picks up this disease infested thing. I mean, he's just fearless. He'll do it with snakes, doesn't matter. Bugs, don't care. Fearless, except when it comes to coyotes. My son is absolutely terrified of coyotes. And that's a problem for us because this is Texas. And coyotes are like Whataburger. They're everywhere and nobody likes them. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm just kidding, all you Texan folk. You know, Texas pride's a real thing. Did y'all know that? <laughs> you are so proud of Whataburger. So, hey, this is not my notes, but this is just funny on Texas pride. This morning, my wife and I are driving to your campus down Interstate I-20, and they have this sign up here that, like, tells you things, right? Like if a child's been abducted or slow down, put your seatbelt on. You know what the sign said this morning? Slow down, you're already in Texas. I'm like, that's a little prideful, all right? <laughs> Back to my story. What were we talking about? Arrow, fearless. So anyways, these coyotes. So one time we were out of the piece of property and we're, we're headed back to the truck and, and the sun's starting to set. And sure enough, we're walking. And I think he was four or five at this time as well. And, and we're, we're on our way to the truck and sure enough, coyotes sound off. How many of you have ever heard coyotes sound off? Like in the wild, okay. That, they sounded off, but you could tell they're pretty good a ways away. And my son, as we're walking to the truck, loses his mind, freaks out, runs over and grabs me, and then he starts crying. I'm like, son, we're in the woods and we are men from, we don't cry, all right? Like, sh shut it off right now, let's talk about this. He's freaking out. So here's what I found myself doing as a grown man to this five-year-old. I said, son, what are you scared of? The coyotes, they're going to eat me. I said, son, look at me. <laughs> like, I'm not huge, and I'm not in that great a shape, but I work out a pretty good bit. I'm six foot, 200 pounds. That coyote, a good-sized coyote in Texas, weighs about 40 pounds. So I'm like, son, I will throw punch the coyote. What are you worried about? <laughs> Still, wasn't enough. Daddy, I'm scared. It just keeps crying. Now I'm like, son, I've got a gun. Worst case, I will shoot him in the face. Like, you don't have anything to worry about. Is this, this, this is this a safe place to say that? No, this is Mineral Wells. You're all good. I have to be careful of saying stuff like that in the city, all right? <laughs> You're a bunch of rednecks in here. We're family. We're good. Shoot him in the face, all right? <laughs> to save the baby calves, all right? Everybody calm down. <laughs> so I'm explaining this to him, and, and, and still, here's the problem, my son. He forgets who his daddy is. 
Hey, Christians, can I remind you of who your God is? He's the Alpha and the Omega. Didn't we just see that a while ago? He's the beginning and the end. There is nothing that is more powerful than him, all knowing he is ever present. He is your heavenly Father. And the Bible says if your God is for you, then who can be against you? Come on, man, he's for you. But listen, we know this, and it preaches good, doesn't it? Boy, it preaches good, but it sure is hard to live out when things start falling apart around your life. And I stand here as a man understanding that. I'm not exempt from the things that you have to go through just because I have pastor in my title. I go through things and I know what the temptation is to run from him and forget how good he is. And so what I've learned to do, man, this took me a long time to do, but what I've learned to do is when the storm comes, I stay calm. And I'm not gonna allow my emotions and my feelings to lead me. Instead, I'm gonna allow my faith to lead me. You know what's also interesting about that coyote? That coyote on his best day, on his best day, doesn't have a chance of taking my son from me. Can I remind someone today, I don't know what you're going through, I don't know what the enemy's bringing against your life, but on his best day, he can't take you from your heavenly father. On his best day. Now can he make some noise? Absolutely, those coyotes can sound off all they want. They can surround us. They can, they can make a bunch of noise to scare my son and put fear in him, but they're not going to touch him. Your enemy, he can do a lot of this, and he can create a lot of fear and anxiety in your life, but he cannot touch you. Why? Because he is not all-powerful. Your heavenly Father has, and the devil didn't pay a price for your life. His son Jesus, God's son Jesus paid that price for you, and nobody can reverse that. I'm not belittling your pain. I'm not belittling your fear. I'm not belittling your depression, your anxiety that you're experiencing. I'm not belittling that. I know it hurts and I know it's hard. And I know right now you can't see past this pain and past this storm, but can I tell you today that your God still loves you and he is still for you. Stay calm. Stay calm. Number two, if you're taking notes, not only do we need to stay calm, we need to feed the fire. You know, we just finished a six-week study on the Holy Spirit. And the whole reason we did six weeks, we spent six weeks preaching on the Holy Spirit. The whole reason we did that is because we're trying to help you understand as a Christian that you have the spirit of the living God living within you. The moment that you said yes to God, he placed his spirit within you. Do you know how you become who God's called you to be? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know my favorite part of the verse, Pastor Ryan, Galatians 5, that we studied all the fruits? It's the Holy Spirit that produces it. Hey, Christians, do you realize it is not on you? to become who God has called you to be, it's just on you to surrender the Holy Spirit. If you'll surrender, if you'll let go of control of your life, then the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you to become the man the woman he's called you to be. And so the reason I gave this point number two, feed the fire, is because again, when storms come, the fire, the flame is the Holy Spirit that lives within you. In fact, Hebrews right here says in 1229, our God is a consuming fire. And when you said yes to Jesus, he placed his spirit, a consuming fire within you. The flame is in you. The question is, when the storm comes, are you going to flee and run from him, or are you going to stay and tend the flame? you got to feed the fire. And here's what I found in my life. And when the storms come, what I have to begin doing when I'm going through things in my life, and again, I'm not exempt. I go through things in my life. Miranda and I have to be intentional with our relationship. We have to be intentional with our kids. We have to be intentional with our finances. And we have spiritual warfare in all those areas, just like many of you. I go through things in my life, even as a pastor. And what I've found is that when I recognize that I'm in a storm, because here's the thing about storms, you know when you're in them. No one's ever come up to you and said, hey, do you realize you're in a storm? Do you realize your life sucks right now? Nobody has to come up to you. I'm sorry, I don't know if I should have said that. Sorry, Pastor Ryan. Nobody has to come and tell you that. Why? Because you know it. Hey, Christian, when you recognize you're in a storm, you need to feed the fire. Are you spending time with God? Do you talk to him, also known as prayer? Do you worship him? Yes, I could do all those things on Sunday. Great. Do you do them daily? Because here's what I found. I I do these things daily, and and I'm not not telling you this to, to brag on me or pat me on the back. Listen, I read this book every single day. I journal every three days. I worship every day. I pray every day. And listen to me, sometimes when the rain comes, that's not enough fuel. And what I do when I recognize I'm in a storm, I'm going to increase in one or more of those areas in my life. Again, 
it's not a works-based relationship. I'm fueling the fire that's already within me. I'm fueling the fire. So what I'll do, in fact, if, if I'm just honest with you, is this a safe place? Can I be honest? Great, I'm gonna be honest. Here we go. Good, pastor, you're a preacher. You should be honest. Okay, well, vulnerable then. This past summer I had to do this. I was in a drought, spiritually speaking, this summer. Despite the fact that I spent time with God every single day, I felt as far from him as I felt in a really long time. And I couldn't figure it out. So you know what I did? I didn't run for cover. I fed the fire. I increased in worship in my life. Now I love all types of music, and I don't think there's anything with lots of different genres and types of music. But you know what I did? Instead of listening to those different genres when I'm out doing things, I put more worship into my life. Because here's what I said. Okay, God, I'm spending time with you, but I feel far from you, which means... I, I want more time with you. Like I need to, when, when my marriage is struggling, I don't need to go spend more time with my friends. I need to have more date nights with my wife. Like this is the same way with God. Like he hasn't left, he's going nowhere. And so if you find yourself in a storm or a valley or in a drought or far from God, man, increase in these areas in your life. Why? You're just feeding the fire. That's all you're doing. You're feeding the fire in your life. Stay calm, feed the fire. And then here's the last one for you. And before I give this one to you, let me just give you a heads up. You're not going to like this one. This one won't sell a whole lot of books. Point number three is this. Endure the rain. Endure the rain. In fact, as I was thinking about this, Pastor Ron, I was like, man, you'll probably never go to a church conference called Endure the Rain. (laughs) We'll probably never sing a worship song on Sunday morning called Endure the Rain. You're probably not going to see it on a lot of Christian t-shirts, Endure the Rain. Because here's why. We don't want to talk about the things that we have to endure and suffer and deal with in this life. We don't. But the reality is it happens to us anyway, doesn't it? So what we've got to figure out as Christians is we can love Jesus and be full of faith, but we're still have to going to go through some stuff. So how do we make those things balance? In fact, here's what the Bible says about suffering. James 1.12 says this. Blessed is the one who endures trials because he has stood the test And he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Now, when I read this verse, I'm like, okay, that word endure is interesting. I need to go look it up. Having a Louisiana education, I have to look up words sometimes because they don't always mean what I thought they mean. All right, so I looked up this word, endure. You ready for this definition? Check out the definition of endure. Here's what it is. It means to suffer patiently. The Bible just told you and me, as Christ followers, that when we experience storms in our life, we're gonna have to suffer patiently. And what's interesting is this morning when I was praying for you guys and looking over my message, that word patiently really stuck out to me for the first time. Again, fourth time I preached this, but for the first time that word patiently really stuck out to me because here's what's interesting about patience. Everywhere you find it in the Bible, it's a reminder that you are not in control of the timing. Suffer patiently. How long, God, is this storm going to last? How long, God, is this valley going to take? As long as it needs to. And the timing is not on you and I. Instead, what we've got to do is we've got to stand in the midst of the storm of this valley, this, this situation, this suffering, this pain, this trial, whatever we're going through, we've got to stand in the midst of it. And we've got to stay calm. We've got to feed the fire. And we've got to be willing to endure the rain. Because can I remind you, there is no other option. You don't get to go, oh, God, I'm not a Christian anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. That's not how this works. Nothing can change your eternity. That's the beauty of the gospel. But you signed up for this. You're in it now. But here's the beauty of enduring the rain. Check this, and this was revolutionary for me as a believer when I understood this. A lot of times when the storm comes, when the problems come against our life, naturally we want to run from the pain, don't we? I mean, if we're all honest. No one says, bring on the storm. Come on, make my life terrible. Like, no one says that, right? But we can change our perspective. And I'm going to help you with that right now as I wrap up. For me, here's what I realized. The storms in my life, the valleys that I experience, the hard times that I go through as a human being, watch this. It's the chaos. It's the storm. It's the rain that causes me to feed the fire. It's the storm. It's the rain that causes you to run to his presence. 
When you study the life of King David, his most intimate moments with God were in the worst seasons of his life. Think about this, friend, and dwell on this and meditate on this idea for the rest of the day. At the worst moments in these storms and this rain that you're experiencing in your life are the very thing that help you experience the most intimacy with your Heavenly Father. Would you do it a hundred times over? Because the answer we should come to is absolutely yes. Was it painful? Yes. I'm not removing the pain. Is it difficult? Yes, I'm not removing that. But if it means that we get to be closer to him and it's the very thing that's gonna push us to him, then man, we embrace the storm. Is it gonna be tough? Absolutely. Are we going to get soaking wet? Absolutely. But in the midst of it, we're gonna feed the fire and we're gonna tend the flame and our relationship with God's gonna go to the next level. Come on, somebody. And isn't that what we desire more than anything? <laughs> tend the flame. Say it with me. Tend the flame, when, not if, but when the storms come, stay calm, feed the fire, and really just press in to who he is. Endure the rain. Amen? Let me pray for you this morning. Lord, thank you so much for the testimony of your word. God, thank you for speaking to us today. And God, my hope is that for every person in here today that's experiencing a storm in their life, that's going through some things right now, God. My hope is that you would speak to them today. May this be a reminder of what they already know. And that's a reminder that you are good and that you love them. And God, my prayer for every person in this room, and God, there's some people in here, they're going through some really difficult stuff. God, they've been in this storm for a long time. This valley seems to be endless. And for those individuals, God, that are in those situations, God, I just pray that you give them courage and boldness today, not to go and be a better Christian, but to simply have more faith in you, more confidence in your goodness. And in the midst of this, in the pain and the rain, God, I just pray they would begin to spend more time with you and feed the fire and endure the rain. Be with them, Lord, and strengthen them in the midst of these trials. Thank you, Lord. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, one more prayer for you today before we move on. For some of you in this room, the truth is it's nearly impossible for you to endure the storm. And the reason is is because you don't have a relationship with God to begin with. See, I can endure the rain, I can endure the storms, and I can be who God's called me to be, not because of who Zach Grider is, but because of the Holy Spirit that lives within me. And I have that Holy Spirit live within me, the Spirit of God living within me, not because I'm a good person and not because I'm a pastor. I have that Spirit because at one point I decided to give my life to Jesus. And for some of you in here, that's the step that you've been missing. You've tried religion for a really long time, but you've yet to surrender to a relationship. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray a prayer in just a second. This is not a magical prayer. In fact, you can use your own words if you'd like. But what we're going to do in this moment is surrender our life to Jesus and receive the Spirit of God so that we can be who he's called us to be. So if you've never done that, friend, I'm going to invite you to do that with me. And again, you can use your own words if, you, if you'd like, or you can just pray with me quietly to yourself. So if that's you, friend, pray with me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. And God, I know I've messed up. And right now, God, I want to ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I want to turn from doing life my way, and I want to start doing life your way. And Jesus, I want to invite you into my heart and into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. And I want to thank you for dying on that cross for me, Jesus, for conquering sin and death, and for just now hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, there are some of you here today that you just prayed that prayer with me. And look, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out or anything like that. I just want to celebrate your decision. So with no one looking up, no one looking around, just those that prayed with me, would you just lift up your hand real quick? Just those that prayed. Just those that prayed. Awesome. Got you, sir. Got you, sir. Awesome. Just those that prayed. Got you, ma'am. Awesome. Just those that prayed. Awesome. Got you, buddy. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, those of you that just prayed with me, 
and lifted your hand, will you just look up at me and make eye contact real quick? Just those that pray. No one else looking up, no one looking around. Man, I'm so excited about your decision. And this is just the beginning of a life-changing relationship. You're starting a journey today. And as your spiritual family, we want to go on this journey with you. So here's what I want to ask you to do. There's a green card in the seat pocket in front of you. It looks just like this one in my hand. I want you to grab that card. You don't have to give all that information. I just want you to put your name in a way for us to contact you and just say, I took a step towards Christ. In fact, I think the exact verbiage is, is, yeah, I took a step towards Christ. And I want you to fill that out. Here's why that's so important. Because we want to help you take your next step in your relationship that you've started today. And this is not meant for you to go on your own. We want to go on this journey with you. So, again, fill that out, and Pastor Ron's going to tell you what to do with that in just a moment. Man, I'm so, so excited for you. Hey, can we give it up for those that took a step towards Christ today? Come on, show them some love. Well, listen, I love you guys so much. Pastor Ron, tell us what's next. Man, can we give Pastor Zach a round of applause today? I just loved having him out here today. What an incredible word. I'm encouraged. Uh, I'm ready to, out, to go out and just fight the enemy uh, right now and just uh, wage war for the Lord. And so, hey, I am just hope you're encouraged today. Hey, if you are here for the first time today, if, if you have made a decision here recently, if you're needing prayer, would you please grab one of these Connect cards, fill it out. We would love to help you take your next step. We'd love to get you plugged into the High Ridge family. So if you've never filled one of these out, if you've made a decision recently, or if you're just needing prayer, if you're wanting more information about our church, please fill out this Connect card. You can turn it in at the Information Center, or you can drop it in. The offering box is located at the end of the Worship Center. Thank you so much for doing that for me. Hey, we're going to continue right now in an act of worship, and we're going to be obedient in giving of our tithes and go above and beyond and be generous with our offerings. And so I want to thank you, church, because this year, to date, we have over 346 people that have said yes to Jesus right here in this room. Can we give God some praise? Man, that is absolutely incredible. It never gets old. This is the reason why we do this is for life change to happen, for people to encounter Jesus in a profound way. And when you're faithful in the area of giving, you are a part of it. So I want to say thank you for helping, out, helping us carry out our vision of strengthening people for life. So there's some ways that you can give. You can text to give. You can give online at hirogmw.com. You can give through the app, or you can drop your tithes and offerings at the back of the worship center, and the offering box is located on the back wall. Thank you so much for helping us strengthen people for life. Hey, where's all my men at in the room? Hey, we have men's night tonight in Graham. We have men's night on Friday night in Fort Worth. I want to personally invite you. It's at 6 o'clock. I will be at the Graham one tonight. I would love for you to, to come out there. I would love to see your face. We have some men that are carpooling. Uh, we would love to go with you. I know that uh, Tanner and myself, we would love to connect with you. If you're wanting to go out there, if you're wanting to carpool, find one of us after service. We would love to talk to you about that. And uh, ladies, we haven't forgot about you either. On November 13th, we have She Speaks in Graham and in Fort Worth. And we're so excited about that. We want to invite you to that as well. We want to see everyone walk in community and, and build lifelong relationships that lift you up and help you take your next steps with the Lord. Well, will everybody stand to their feet? If you are needing prayer today, we would love to pray for you. Our prayer partners are going to come to the front. If you are needing prayer at all today, we are a church that believes in the power of prayer. We would love to pray for you. So if you need that today, do not leave without getting prayed for. Well, I hope you were strengthened. I hope you were encouraged. I love y'all so much. You're dismissed. <laughs>